on reading the gospel in preparation for the sermon to you this morning, I was somewhat taken aback when I read the words spoken by Jesus. Oh no, here I am to talk at the family service, and Jesus is saying, who is my family? How can he put me in such an awkward position, I thought. You have seen our, some of our slides brilliantly sourced by Kelvin, one depicting families, and this created another challenge for me. In these slides, we see a typical family, mother, father, and a couple of children. Given this, it was a good challenge for me to address the scenes of happy families against the words spoken by Jesus, which appear to contradict the image we have of families. And I note this morning we have a selection of families around the congregation, but also many other people. But so often in life, it's what you do not expect or do not anticipate which helps you grow in thought and mind and experience new ways of being. Maybe this is why Jesus used the words, who is my family? I wonder how many of you, when you heard those words in the reading, were a bit unsettled by them. Maybe you even asked yourselves, why is Jesus saying this? It appears to be very disrespectful to his mother and the rest of his family. After all, we are always told to honor thy mother and thy father. You may react in another way and try not to think too deeply about it because it raises doubts about the image you have of Jesus. But we need not be afraid to actually hear the words and think deeply what Jesus meant. If we approach it with faith, something dramatic happens because we begin to see the wisdom in his words. In the Holy Land at Jesus' times, family was very important extremely important, but also extremely stifling. And each member in the family acted for the benefit of the whole. It was quite outrageous for Jesus to say what he did. Today in our world, family is important to us, but we may not always act for the benefit of the whole group. We have become more nuclear in our family which is fine, but it can be limiting if the family boundary is very rigid. We cannot always guarantee love within all families, and there are maybe problems, and I'm sure in Jesus' time this was also true. And Jesus recognized this Remember, we had the parable of the prodigal son, which underpins what Jesus wanted us to take note of. Although the example is of a family in the parable, it is also intended for us to see ourselves and our relationship with God. Just as the son realized his relationship with his father after a time of hardship and separation and sin. If we look beyond just the story of the parable, we are transported from this physical family to a much larger spiritual family and hence ultimately to God. Jesus wants us to broaden our horizons, to move beyond just our own family 
and embrace a greater family, being the family of believers. To bring it home, we year, as we come together as family members, as single people, as couples, as friends, as neighbours, young and old, we form the family that Jesus spoke of and that God had ordained for humankind. Church is a family. It is not like a family, it is a family. It's a very powerful family because it's a family that always exists for each one of us as we pass through life. This spiritual family brings support to many, many people. And that is what a family should do. It's a goal we are all called to achieve, to love one another, to support one another. Being a church family, we need to break down barriers. We need to open doors in order to begin to enjoy spiritual unity. A church family is not restricted and not like our own families. It is much more than that. It embraces believers from any strata of society, whatever background, whatever age, there is no discrimination. The church family is one which should welcome all and more importantly, befriend all because we all share that friend in Jesus. That's what should bind us together and that's the family Jesus wants us to aspire to. And just before you criticize, I'm not saying that the church family will not face some problems, just like we have in our own families. There will be disagreements, splits, separations. The difference is that as a church family, we have a stated mission to try and work together, not to succumb at the first hurdle, to overcome those problems, to see that vision beyond ourselves. Where there are disputes, the church family should be mindful of their common calling and allegiance, not to themselves, but to Christ's teaching and to God's will in all matters. When we recognize this, when we have humility, when we accept Christ, no other matter seems important if we focus on his love for us. When Jesus says, who is my family? He points to all around him, all are welcome. He is not deserting his physical family, as you may have initially thought, but he is actually widened in his arms to all who come to believe and share. God is calling us through Jesus to the privilege of opening the doors of our lives to each other, to welcome each other as a family. In the kingdom of God, our spiritual family becomes more and more important and we need to nurture it. We can't just ignore it. We can't just come to church on a Sunday morning. It becomes part of us. When we open the door with reverence and love, we become the family God designed the church to be. Amen.